Hello, welcome to this tutorial video. Today we're going to look at communicating with students. This is actually quite simple in essence. There are quite a few ground rules, much the same as anything in teaching, and if you get the few basics right, it provides you with a really solid platform. Then after that you can vary and move in any direction you want. A lot of what you cover here in speaking to students is going to be very similar to how you would speak to students if you were a teacher. There's only one or two key differences. One is that you might get slightly more time with a one-to-one -one student to communicate and get something across, and two, you might have more flexibility with space than a teacher because of the roving nature of how you actually interact with students. So that's one of the first things I'll invite you to consider when you're communicating with students. Consider your place in the room. If you're in a situation where you're having a discussion with a student, and you need to pick something up with them, are you in the right place to have a conversation? And by that I mean, if it's going to be something that is maybe more disciplinary in nature, would you prefer to be quietly having that conversation in the corner? If it's something to do with their academic progress, would you prefer that to be somewhere in the corner, maybe just shielded somewhat? Would you prefer it to be at the front of the class in front of everyone if you were extolling praise on a student? Think about the place in which you can do this. Now, teachers will do this quite naturally as well. They'll do different things at different places and at different times. A teacher is able to call a student to them at any time, and you'll have that right and privilege too. But you might not want to use it as much because you don't want to disrupt the students in the lesson and how the teacher set it up. You might not be able to call out a student in exactly the same way and direct a student in exactly the same way the teacher would because you might cause a small ripple in the classroom, which might hinder it overall. And, as we said before, you want to blend into the class. You don't want to draw that attention to yourself. So, think about what you need to say, and when and where in the room you can say it, and what opportunities there are to communicate. With regard to any instruction that you give, try and make sure that it's simple and clear. Try and make sure that the sentences you use are short, concise and clear. I want you to XYZ or please make sure you XYZ and then leave it at that. If you say too much to the student that involves maybe seven or eight different processes, they won't be able to take that all in. As a result, they won't want to listen. They want to know what they need to do next. If you're saying that the overall goal is this, but first we're going to do this, that's fine but you must be clear in what they've got to do next. Break it down so students don't become intimidated with the amount of work that's actually ahead of them. Also, be careful that students don't start to think too much about what you said with regard to the end of the journey and then get frustrated that they have to do the beginning bits first. Try to make sure any advice is simple and clear and try not to offer more than two bits of advice or give them more than two actions that they're going to have to remember throughout the course of a piece of work or when giving them the next set of instructions. As with communicating with anyone, try to get eye contact but be aware of those students that struggle with eye contact too, such as those on the autistic spectrum. Make sure you're looking at the student and that you have their attention. Make sure they're in a position where they can see as basic as it is, it is vital that they're actually responding to you. You can see that their concentration is focused on you through eye contact, but for those that struggle with this, ensure there are plenty of prompts for response, such as non-verbal cues like thumbs up or the chance for verbal responses to questions like, is that okay? One thing you can do, especially if you're working one-to-one, -one, is to try and use hand movements to get the student's attention. So, for example, if you're sitting next to a student or you're coming over to a student, you could just tap the book in front of them, or just tap the desk to bring their attention. Or you can, if you're standing in front of the class and you're waiting for someone's attention, just raise your hand in silence, and then a lot of students will actually just respond because they know that's a cue. The teacher is waiting for the attention and the focus to be directed to them. Think of some kind of movement that can actually grab their attention. It might be arms out, it might be arms down, it could be a whole range of things. But try and use a cue to back up your call to attention. This way the students have a physical cue as well as an audible cue to get used to. Never be afraid to repeat yourself. 
That's one of the best things about these video sessions and the video tutorials that we've been using over the last few years. It allows you to repeat watching a tutorial as often as you want until you are happy. So don't be afraid to repeat what you're saying to students. You will often need to say things more than once to get a point across. Also, always check for understanding. So if you're in a situation where you've asked students to do something, make sure that they then explain back to you what they're doing and summarise what it is they're doing. And make sure they've put it in their own words. Usually you'll find, if you say something to a class, some will get to it straight away, but hardly ever does everyone get it the first time. So when you ask back to the class, OK, what did I want from you? Even if it's down to a single student and they can put it back to you, other students will listen to the explanation given by the student and that conversation will help the process of getting the whole class to understand. This is a good strategy because you are involving the students and avoiding them switching off to your voice and getting frustrated. If you feel uncomfortable with repeating yourself verbatim or think that this is the wrong strategy, don't be afraid to paraphrase and write things down, maybe dealing with one key point at a time. That way the students don't just have to remember what you've said. They can look either to the board or maybe to something in their book where you've jotted things down or onto something that you've printed for them. Make sure that the instructions are clear for them to be able to grasp before they begin. Also, make sure the class is aware of your cues, explain and practice them if you feel there is any uncertainty. Little things like that help you open avenues for communicating with the students and getting the basics of the communication right. I'll see you in the next tutorial.